Hello viewers. Welcome to the September episode of Tech Bytes. This month we have about four great reports all from different categories, different sectors. Uh, we have covered engineering, we have covered healthcare, um, we have covered GCCs. Uh, right and uh, we've also covered a report on the technology sector performance of the quarter so four different distinct reports are covered and we have uh, our analyst who will come and share key insights from each of these reports uh, but before that uh, what are you waiting for please uh, like subscribe and share our channel and now it's time to get started on each of these reports okay so now we have Vandana with us who will not cover one report she'll cover two reports yeah. and uh, the first one is uh, NASCOM's biennial study on the GCC landscape it's one of the most awaited reports of the year and Vandana um, uh, what all does it cover I mean why did we do this uh, could you just give a brief to the audience sure uh, so Achita, uh, you know the last five years has been a tremendous uh, for the GCC landscape and this report is actually a deep dive into the GCC landscape wherein we are you know we are witnessing what are the drivers uh, for the GCC growth and uh, this would be the you know the improving service maturity the increasing you know high-end er and work that is being driven out of the country the talent and also the synergies between the GCCs and the SPs, the integration of AI, etc. And uh, this report actually covers some very interesting numbers as well, uh, whether the total units, uh, the market size, the talent workforce that is here. So all of that is being covered here in this report. Sure. So we have landscape, we have mm -hmm. trends, we have an outlook for this sector, yeah. right? So uh, key findings, Vandana, uh, from this report. Sure. Uh, so as on uh, FY24, uh, we see that the number of GCCs are over 1700 with the units almost touching 3000 and uh, the overall market size is uh, crossing over 64 billion with the talent workforce, uh, GCC installed talent crossing over 1.9 million. So the reasons for these have been, you know, of course, the growing maturity of the GCCs in the country, the talent, uh, the high-end engineering work, uh, the AI integration as well, and also, you know, the overall uh, synergies between GCCs and ESPs as well. So all that has been driving this growth. Okay, and uh, what's the outlook for the sector that we have presented in the report? Sure. Uh, so for uh, as of you, we have taken the outlook for the next seven years uh, by 2030. So as on 2030, we do expect the uh, the overall GCC numbers to cross over 2100, with the number of units to double up to over 43, 4400, and the market size we are expecting it to cross over 100 billion, and the installed talent also we are expecting it to grow over you know cross over 2.5 or approximately between 2.5 to 2.8 million. Okay, so I think interesting forecasts uh, uh, for the GCC segment. Uh, viewers, this is a paid report, but we keep running discount offers. Please go ahead and download it from the NASCOM website. And thanks, Vandana. Just stay back for the next one. Yes. Um, this is on the engineering segment, right? Engineering yeah. segment, and you know, you're focusing on the auto sector. So, what's this report all about? Sure. Uh, so, Achita, last year we did a deep dive on the engineering R&D sector and we had some sectoral deep dives as well that we did, uh, which covered. And it was till 2030, we saw what was the growth, what was driving this growth of the engineering R&D sector. And we saw that one of the growth drivers what the, was the automotive sector, which was growing at about 8 to 9 percent CAGR till, till 2030. And uh, you know the reasons were many uh, and so what we decided was that we we'll call industry experts from the auto sector which ranges you know from the uh, GCC segment as well as the engineering service provider segment as well. And hence we had a discussion to delve more deep into this and this report is a culmination and an outcome of you know that discussion. Yeah. Okay, quickly top 3-4 findings from this report. Sure, uh, the three mega trends that are driving the auto sector is uh, first of all the digital technologies, second is sustainability, the third is AI. So under digital technologies we have your usual suspects like your uh, ADAS, your connected vehicles, your SDVs, all of that. Sustainability, how you know the growth of EVs and the use of uh, renewable services, uh, renewable resources or in the over, you know penetration of that in the energy grids. And of course, the integration of AI in the product and process uh, development as well. So, shortening the product development cycles, using that uh, to you know lead the growth for auto sector. Yeah. Sure. And what does this all mean for the technology companies, the R&D service providers, the OEMs? What are the key takeaways and way forward? 
So, you know, way forward, these uh, the uh, uh, tier ones, the service providers, the OEMs, all of them need to reimagine their uh, talent and product strategies and also their operating model strategies as well. So, they need to integrate these three mega trends if we want to witness that sort of growth that we are envisaging. So, uh, you know, integrating the digital technologies, integration of your AI, integration of sustainable uh, resources into the overall product strategies, your operating models, your, you know, uh, overall uh, process strategies as well, and creating these agile methodologies so that, you know, we can grow uh, and in case of any turbulences or over the world across, you know, in the next seven years, then we can actually make sure that this growth is sustainable and that's how we grow forward. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, viewers. There's a free report. Uh, please feel free, to, feel free to download it from the website or from the community. Thank you. So, uh, NASCOM has done a report uh, on AI in healthcare, and we have Shwetan with us to discuss more on the key findings. Welcome to the show, Shwetan. Thank you. Thank you so, uh, Shwetan, uh, you know, why did we do this report? What does this report cover? Uh, any thoughts on before we get started on the key findings? Sure. Thank you for this question. Uh, so our AI healthcare report is one of a kind report that you know covers the a need for AI adoption in the Indian healthcare sector. Okay. So basically, uh, there are three key objectives of the report. Firstly, the report is an integrated point of view, uh, you know, covering some of the emerging case use cases of AI in healthcare. Uh, it also covers drivers and challenges and looks at the real adoption on the ground. Secondly, the report uh, is, uh, is establishes a case for mass care adoption of AI in the Indian healthcare sector, uh, and how uh, some of the emerging use cases can be, uh, you know, bridge the gap uh, that exists. Lastly, uh, the report is not just another research piece. Uh, this is also to do with, uh, you know, providing recommendations to the ecosystem in the form of a dedicated uh, adoption playbook section uh, that we covered in the report. So this is what the report covers. Okay, looks to be a very comprehensive report. Uh, Shudan, can you quickly share top five findings from the report? Sure. So let me talk about uh, in three to four, uh, you know, key takeaways from the report. Uh, firstly, uh, you know, as we would understand that you know, Indian healthcare sector is India's largest sector in terms of the opportunity, in terms of the addition to the uh, GDP. Uh, the sector is going to touch uh, US dollars, six hundred fifty billion dollars uh, by the end of twenty twenty five. Uh, and why that's happening? Uh, there's a lot of uh, uptick in the public health spending. Uh, the traditional Indian healthcare segments uh, are actually diversifying. There's a lot of new opportunity in the form of telemedicine, home healthcare, medical tourism. However, when we look at the out-of-pocket expenditure for Indian healthcare sector, uh, this is again very high as compared to uh, you know other uh, developed economies. So we have to do a lot, uh, and with that actually we arrive at what are the fundamental issues. Uh, and when we look at the uh, fundamental issues, these are in the form of accessibility, affordability. Uh, uh, you know, so we adopt, uh, we establish a case for mass scale adoption of AI. Uh, so, for example, you know, AI solutions, uh, you know, around remote patient uh, diagnostics, uh, remote patient monitoring, uh, and, and uh, you know, treatments, uh, remote care. These can actually really bridge, bridge the gap of around you know ailing medical infrastructure. Similarly, AI enabled R and D and drug development and drug discovery can help uh, uh, you know resolve the issues of skills shortages. So, uh, so we have covered uh, these aspects in depth. Uh, also, another important takeaway from the report is around the real adoption of AI in the Indian healthcare context. Uh, when we look at the adoption, uh, you know we see that more than 66% of the companies across different segments have actually adopted AI. However, when we look closely, we arrive at a point that you know these uh, most of these implementations are actually uh, you know uh, point solutions, and com companies haven't been able to move beyond the POC uh, pilot fatigue that's out there. So these are some of the key takeaways that I wanted to cover. Okay, and uh, going forward, uh, Shwetan, what's what's your expectations? You know, what are key recommendations? What's the outlook for the sector? Could you share some thoughts? Sure. So when we look at the future potential of AI in Indian healthcare context, uh, you know we look at three time frames. So we look at look at the short term, medium term, and you know long term. So in the short term, uh, you know AI can actually really help in uh, you know enabling new efficiencies in terms of healthcare services delivery, solution delivery, uh, and this can actually manifest in the form of you know remote patient monitoring, uh, you know uh, remote care, uh, you know. Uh, when we look at the medium term, uh, you know, AI solutions around, you know, uh, preventive care uh, and how AI can be really uh, integrated with the electronic health records and how that actually can push the boundaries of pre preventive care and personalized treatments, personalized care. 
so that we see uh, and in the long term we actually see that ai can really help in uh, you know uh, uh, you know driving the next steps towards uh, universal health coverage improving the public health uh, and uh, you know how it can really help in pandemic prediction and mitigation planning so uh, that's how that's how we see the future of ai uh, you know in healthcare Sector. Sure. So we are, this is start, and it's a long journey ahead of us. So thank you for sharing the insights. Uh, you know, uh, Shwetanja and views. It's a free report. Uh, please feel free to download it from our website and from community. Sure. Okay. So now we have Prajal with us, uh, who will talk about uh, the latest uh, technology industry quarterly tracker that we have released. Uh, and Prajwal, this is about uh, results of the publicly traded right. uh, tech companies globally and in India, right? right so, right. Uh, first question to you, Prajwal, you know, um, uh, what's really happening uh, when it comes to the global tech companies mm -hmm. uh, and, and what's really happening at the macro environment? Can we just give a quick read? Sure, Achuta. So, uh, according to Gartner's projections, uh, as of July 2024, the worldwide IT and technology spend is expected to increase by 9.2% in 2024, which is lower as compared to their April estimates in 2024. Now this slowdown is majorly uh, due to weakness across segments, uh, including uh, consulting and business process services. Now talking about the uh, key contracts, so as reported by ISG, uh, global ACVs of $24.8 billion were reported in Q2 CY24, uh, which is highest since Q2 CY22 and 0.8% higher quarter on quarter. Now within this managed services ACV increased to uh, $10.1 billion, while uh, as a service ACV increased to 14.7 billion dollars during the quarter. So yeah. Okay, so I think interesting trends globally. Uh, how does that translate to the Indian environment? You, you've looked at the Indian companies also, right? Right. right. Uh, what do you see there? What are the key trends for this quarter that you want to highlight? Sure. So Achuta, in terms of you know the sample set of uh, Indian tech companies that we track, uh, you know the revenue for them increased 1.3 percent quarter on quarter and 2.3 percent year on year. Uh, now talking about some of the key geographies uh, that we track. Uh, within that, North America and India grew sequentially, uh, while EMA remained stable and the rest of the world declined. Now, also, if I talk about some of the key uh, verticals uh, that we have for the industry, uh, BFSI, telecom, retail, healthcare, and energy and utilities increased sequentially, while manufacturing, travel, and so hospitality declined during the quarter. Now, just some of the key uh, segments that we have, uh, pure play beeping revenues continue to increase sequentially with broad based uh, growth across segments uh, with, with you know some prior investments now yielding results for them. But uh, the, the downside here was for pure play year in day revenues that declined sequentially due to some project delays and also you know a weakness in the sustainability vertical. Now if I talk about the hiring aspect. Uh, the, the net employee base increased by 0.8% sequentially and this comes after a continuous decline of 5 quarters. Uh, in terms of the utilization rates excluding trainees that increased 260 basis points uh, year on year and if I talk about the attrition that remained stable at 14.4%. So you know Chita, these were the key updates uh, that we have from the industry. I know I spoke about, about a lot of numbers but maybe I request the audience to go through the report for some more uh, thanks. I think it was a good quarter this uh, this time, uh, Prajwal, because other than the minor blip in the year in the segment, other sectors did fairly well. So thank you for sharing and uh, viewers, please download the report. Uh, it's available on the NASCOM website. So Prajwal, don't go yet. Stay back. A uh, lot of things happened in the tech industry, in the Indian tech industry in the last couple of months, right? Technology partnerships, uh, contracts, uh, m and Could you just give a quick recap of what really happened? Sure, Ajita. So I'll start with some of the key collaborations that we saw in the past few months. Starting with First Source Solutions collaborating with Microsoft to enhance digital transformation services to its clients globally. The second major collaboration was between Google and government of Tamil Nadu uh, to empower AI startups in the state while also uh, developing skills. Uh, the third major one was between Dell Technologies and Wipro, wherein uh, Dell's AI factory will be onboarded to Wipro's enterprise AI ready platform. Now to the talking about some of the key contracts that we witnessed, <coughs> starting with Infosys, uh, you know, getting into an agreement with Posty, which is a uh, logistic services provider. Now within this agreement, uh, Infosys aims to improve customer experience for them while also uh, improving their operational efficiency. The, th the second major contract was between uh, HCL Tech and Xerox uh, to drive innovation with AI and digital engineering. And within this, HCA Tech will support uh, Xerox's newly built global business services organization. 
The third one is between Ori2, which is a telecom company, and Tech Mahindra. Now, within this contract, Tech Mahindra aims to uh, improve or advance their uh, digital transformation journey while also enhancing their digital customer experience. Now, which are the two major acquisitions that we saw in the past few months? The first one is Nazara Technologies acquiring complete ownership of Kidopia publisher Paperboard apps. Now, with this acquisition, uh, Nazara Technologies aims to integrate Paperboard apps onto, onto its platform while also uh, benefiting from its healthy cash flow. The second major acquisition was the Great Hackett Group, uh, you know, acquiring Indian Gen AI startup Leeway Hunts. Uh, now, with this acquisition, uh, Hackett Group aims to integrate those Gen AI capabilities into its own bucket. So, yeah, these were some of the key facts that I discovered in the past few months. Great. Thank you, Rajiv. Thanks, thanks, Achutha. Okay. To uh, end things now, we have Kathy over here who will talk about some of the key sessions, some of the key videos that we have uploaded on our channel. Kathy, welcome to Tech Bytes. Thanks, Achuta. So we have recently released a number of interesting and insightful sessions. Do check out the discussion from leaders of KPIT, Continental, Renault Nissan, Tech and Business Center India and BCG on the ERD automotive sector in India and how the future looks like. Also, we recently released episodes from our series, Strive of the Startup Chronicles, on two uh, segments. One is how IoT is transforming industrial manufacturing in conversation with Smart OTO. And the other one was in the healthcare segment of how AI is revolutionizing the entire healthcare market in conversation with two startups, that is Lark AI and Ripple Healthcare. Do check these episodes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, viewers. I hope you have had a good understanding of all the reports, all the research that we have published in the last month or so. Um, the reports are all available on the NASCOM community, they are available on the NASCOM website. Uh, please feel free to download them and uh, do like, share and subscribe to our videos and post a few comments if you have anything on some of the reports that we have pushed out. Thank you.